This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Bolts Lawn Care LTD Company. Bolts Lawn Care is a professional lawn care and landscaping business that's been in the business for over 20 years. Bolts Lawn Care specializes in lawn care, landscape, drain work, and so much more. Call Bolts Lawn Care LTD today for any and all of your outdoor needs. Bolts Lawn Care offers free estimates. Give them a call today, 304-543-6565. That's Bolts Lawn Care, 304-543-6565. everybody welcome back to on the limb with nature's voice game calls how's everybody doing this evening Woo! glad to be here mike we've got uh, dave young in here on production in the studio and we got dan hall on the phone yes sir how you guys doing tonight mike and dave we doing good buddy how about yourself oh i'm doing well man i tell you We've got some exciting things coming up tonight. We got another guest that's been on with us before, Jeremy Jarrett, pro archer, member of the uh, USA archery team, and uh, he's kind of stepped into a new career. So he'll tell us about that here in a little bit. But first, man, I want to talk about this event that we got coming on October the sixth. October the sixth, big date, y'all. So this is our. We've been doing live Cabela's events, you know, doing some live podcasts at Cabela's. And we're doing our first one here in Cross Lanes at the Breathe Wine and Culture Company. So we just had a meeting with them today. Got all the details ironed out. We've got some special guests coming in. David Miller with uh, Appalachian Range. Uh, Jason and Jackson Webb from Hunt Necks. Uh, we've got uh, Gerald Bennett with Warhead Archery Company coming in from Ohio. So he's going to be showcasing some of his product there. And he's going to be talking about it. We're going to do kind of like a roundtable discussion with archery season. You know, um, October the 6th, archery season will already be in session. I believe it starts here September 30th. Isn't that right, Dan? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it is. September 30th. So archery season will already be around. You know, hopefully the temperatures will be cooling down. It's starting to cool down a little bit better. Um, It's not as hot. You know, we're starting to get into that fall feel. So we'll have a fireside podcast. They're going to have a fire right there. We're going to be doing a cider tasting from Country Boy Brewing Company. So, And they may have a rep there or they may not. Um, we just discussed that today, but they will have some swag to get, give out to people that are there cool. for the cider tasting. So nice. looking forward to that. Just want to showcase those local businesses and, uh, you know, what all they have to offer. You know, I mean, as much as we can support local businesses and shop local, I think, you know, we need to. Absolutely. Um, I Absolutely. try to do it as much as I can. Yep. So, without further ado, please welcome with me Jeremy Jarrett, the head coach of the archery program within the University of Montevallo. How's it going, guys? Good, awesome. Jeremy. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Uh, doing pretty good. Just uh, winding down here, watching some of the kids practice and, and uh, just enjoying the evening, man. You said it. You said it was starting to cool down. It has here too, man. It's it's only about ninety six right now. So <laughs> yeah, down south there in Alabama, where you're at, it's still pretty hot, isn't it? You know, I moved about an hour and a half south when I took the position here at the college, and I didn't think that that's an hour and a half further to hotter weather. So, <laughs> hour and a half closer to hotter weather, as I might say. So. Yeah. So uh, you've it's, uh, uh, it's been really, really miserable, and it's it's been. It's been really hot, really humid. We've had a couple decent evenings, but other than that, it's just been real sticky. And and I'm looking forward to, uh, to either going somewhere where it's a little cooler for a while or, or just looking forward to when I can walk out that morning and come to work with a with a flannel one or something. I'm, yeah. I'm really getting. Yeah, I bet you are, buddy. I mean, I tell you, I can't stand heat. Um, I like cooler weather. I've always liked fall. It's one of my favorite times of year. But uh, so let's uh, let's get in, get right into it. You have coached before. Uh, when you lived here in West Virginia, you were the volleyball girls' volleyball coach there at Braxton County. 
uh, high school. So this is not like a new role for you, but it's on a n- next level kind of thing. So tell us a little bit about your new position and how the University of Montevallo is keeping kids in the outdoors and the heritage of hunting alive. You know, it's it's kind of funny. I, I tell people the story sometimes, and, and uh, the first couple of times that I told the story, you know, it, it was it was kind of a, an emotional thing for me as well. And, and if it just boiled down to it, man, it, it was just a God thing. Um, nothing more, nothing less. I mean, it was it was it was a God thing. I mean, I like to hear that. that that's all. That, that's all it was. Yeah. And uh, but I had I had left one evening to go to my shop to pick up some tools I needed. I was working on one of my bows. And, you know, we'd had some water problems in the shop that was hindering us at our new location from from launching and doing a grand opening and really getting rolling. Um, my shop had flooded four different times. And and so we had work done on it, a new roof put on it. And um, um, it, it quit. You know, we were we were relieved that that, you know, the water problem was fixed and everything. So. And it was just, it was, it, it was a blessing to me to know that, hey, we're ready to go ahead and take the next step and we're ready to get in here and not worry about damage and worry about water problems and all that. So I had left that evening to go down to the shop to, like I said, I, I needed a couple tools to, I was working on one of my personal bows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually working on the bow that I shot at the ASA world championships, uh, back earlier in August, um, in Coleman, Alabama. And, uh, I drove down there and I, I opened the the front door to go in to grab those tools out of my toolbox and my showroom was underwater. Oh my gosh. Uh, I've, I've, I mean, there's been a lot of things sink my heart and, and that was one of them. Um, I just, it just hit me like a, like a hammer in the head. And, uh, so, I mean, there wasn't nothing I could do about it. You know, it was nine o'clock at night. And it is what it is. And, and I just walked through the water and went to my toolbox and got my tools. And, and uh, I went back home and worked on my bow and sat up and watched some TV and just had it on my mind and everything. And pretty much knew that something's got to give. we got to find another place. So I called my, my buddy, who's a county commissioner there in the county, that helped me find that place. And called up a couple friends and I was going to start the process of, you know, even if I could just find a building to move into and it didn't have an indoor range, it, it didn't matter. Um, I, I was going to do it. And the next morning I got a text message. I got a call from a, from a number that I didn't answer. I didn't know who the number was and, and I didn't answer it. And then five minutes later, a text came through and, um, the text was the guy introduced himself, uh, William Crawford, who is the who is the director and the and the head of our presidential outdoor scholarship program here at Montevallo, and he and he texted me, and it was a pretty long text, and I read the text and everything, and and I called him back, and and we we started talking, and he said, well, you know, we 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 have a position here at the college, we're we're looking for a new archery coach, and it never crossed my mind before. I had been asked to get into collegiate coaching uh, several years back by a fella uh, that uh, they were thinking about starting a program at Auburn University, mm-hmm. and it never happened. But um, so I talked to him a little while. He invited me down for lunch and to tour me around campus, talked to me about the position and everything. And and a long story short, it didn't take me. I'm not even going to say an hour. It didn't take me minutes that when I arrived on this campus god put this before me and i better jump on it because this is where he wanted me and um so uh i accepted the position and had a few weeks leading up to actually taking over and um so i was i was real excited um i kind of had an idea of you know how things would be and i know several other collegiate coaches that are currently in in the united states coaching archery and and I, I kind of had an idea of how some of them do things and and everything and and how different I would do some things and 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 that. So um, when I got interviewed, actually by a panel of folks, which was 
a supervisor now and another fella from the from the admissions department and then our shotgun coach steve long uh who i work beside every day super great guys helped me so much um he was also there and and you know talking talking to them about you know how i would you know go about doing things and and you know the structure i would have in place and everything it just all worked out um I started August the 1st here and um, it, it's been, it, it's, it's been one of the greatest things that I have ever done in my entire life. Um, the university is, is absolutely top notch and I've not met anybody here that absolutely just didn't treat me like gold and, and, you know, the help I've gotten, you know, from, the department I'm in and the job position I'm in mm-hmm. to the, to the administration, to the the maintenance department, helping me keep up the ranges and stuff. It's just been nothing but, but a total blessing to me and, and, and my team. And, and it, it's, it's, it's just something that, you know, I had a guy tell me one time, if, if you enjoy what you're doing, you won't work a day in your life. And, and I feel like that I'm living the dream in this position right now. And, and it was just, it, it all, it all came 24 hours after I'm sitting there wondering where am I going to put my score? What am I going to do? And, and all that. Yeah. And, you know, I was showed right there on the spot. This is what you need to be doing. And I couldn't be happier right now. Man. That's amazing. I, I'm, you know, I, I think that, you know, people who are not, God fearing folks, you know, people who aren't uh, Christian don't understand the, you know, just the, 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 the well being, I guess, of, uh, or, or the, um, um, just the peace of knowing that you're where God wants you to be at the right place, at the right place, the place He wants you to be yep. at, at at this time in your life, right place at the right time. I, I'm telling you, man. And, and it, there's, there's such a joy in that. I mean, I mean, you know, you, you get to do what you love to do and that's amazing. You know, add on top of that, yeah. the fact that God's got you there doing what you love to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like, I, I mean, mean, that's just the, you know, that's the whipped cream at the time know? where your spirit bears witness to what God's placing in front of you is yeah. when it just, it all comes out right then. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're like, man, I, I've been doing this thirty some years, and you know God is now placing this before me and giving me this chance. Jeremy, I think that's awesome, man. Yes. Congratulations on the new position. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I told I told one of my students the other day, I can I can think of the three biggest blessings I've ever gotten, and that was that was God saving my soul in the altar at church, my wife, and my career. It's yep. definitely the three biggest blessings I've I've ever gotten before, and it's 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 just to to get up and and drive to work every day, and and I've got you know a, a twenty five minute drive to work, and it's just that twenty five minutes. There's not a lot of people that can say on a twenty five minute commute to their job that they they just almost can't wait to get to work. And man, I have that feeling. Every- <laughs> That's it's, awesome. a, it's a wonderful feeling to have, yeah. and you know, after after thirty years of traveling everywhere and getting to see everything and and compete, and I'm, by the way, I'm not done doing that yet either. But um, just all that time and and all the effort and everything that I've put in, and, and the great things, the the few great things that's happened to me in my archery career, I get to to stand out here every day and 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 pass that on and watch young people you know tell me what their dreams are and, and be able to help them with that and, and it's it's just you know I, I don't i don't know how else to explain it you know i mean i right now at this point in my life i would rather be out here coaching than be out here practicing for a tournament yeah for sure. So, me and That's you awesome. talked a little bit b- before the podcast a couple weeks ago, and you were telling me that the campus there where you all have this scholars program is like its own little resort. I mean, 
you know, like it's like its own little outdoor resort for, you know, like say if you went on a big hunting trip or something. It is. So we have, we have a house here on campus called the Bearden house and we call it our lodge. And our, our lodge is, is not only our offices, but it's also for the students in this program. We run about 115 students in our outdoor scholars program. Um, and the, the lodge is a place for them to hang out. Uh, the students can come and go in the lodge anytime they want. They're in and out all day long. Um, out back of the lodge, we have our brand new indoor range for our archery team. Uh, we have, by the way, our practice facilities, I have, so I have a 50 meter range set up to practice for USA archery events for the students. I have a full 3D range uh, on property that the college uh, purchased and the archery range is on. And I have a brand new indoor range for the students to train in. And it's all right here on campus at the tip of their fingers. Um, that's that's something a lot of colleges aren't fortunate enough to have. And I hope they all are, are able to get that. I know that's their goals. But um, we, we have everything right here for for them to have the opportunity to to get better at what they do and and so having all that right here is just it's it's amazing you know the facilities we have here for the for the kids to grow their their sport you know to grow their skills and and it's also nice when you have those things when recruits are coming in to visit i've got got potential fall 24 new new candidates for for the archery team coming to visit you know later on throughout this week so it's 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 a um i didn't know this existed and, and i don't think it does everywhere but uh, i'm just really enjoying it i'm really enjoying what i do and and if i spend my entire 20 year career here in the school system i'm i'm fine with that so Jeremy, talk to us a little bit about this uh, Buckmaster shoot. <laughs> yeah, so um, so we went to uh, Buckmasters was always a big tournament in the in the pro shooting world. Um, it was always a big payout, great prizes. You win four wheelers, trucks, whatever. Jackie Bushman's just done a a great job with that whole program they have in place. And a few years back, he decided to to do away with that and just make that tournament for the kids and for the collegiate world. So um, we go down there. Um, they went last year and, and we went down this year, uh, just us and Southern Illinois University. And um, this year was, was a little bit different than normal. Um, you, you shoot qualifying rounds and you shoot down to eight people. And then um and then on the final day, those eight people shoot down against each other to determine the champion. And out of those eight spots, we had five of those spots. Um, three of those five spots, I'm trying to think, three or two, two of those five spots were freshman shooters uh, that had just came in. Um, we, we shot, uh, our rounds were tremendous. We actually took a couple guys uh, with us um, that are on the fishing team as well. And and that is, uh, honestly, that's who won. One of our fishermen that is a, a fifth senior, uh, Merritt Arnold, won the Buckmasters this year, the collegiate Buckmaster title. Wow. Uh, and then he represented us shooting for the team championship. And – he, he shot against a kid from, from Illinois that's really good. Um, this, this kid, he, he was he was impressing me. His skill level was unreal. And, and Merritt got up there on the stage, and the, and the round started, and he never missed a target. And, and we were at capture the team title as well and bring that back with us too. Nice. So uh, that was – You know, you're talking about having seniors and stuff. How, how does that work? Like, it, obviously, you know – football you got your recruiting is it kind of the same with the archery teams and all that do you do you guys still have to go out and actively recruit and try to bring these younger generation kids in um i do recruit yes um a couple of weeks ago we went over on the other side of atlanta uh eric tig over there in georgia had a an archery combine more or less for 
uh, young shooters that that shoot on a national world stage and and things. Um, they all got together over there, and several of us colleges set up tents. And I took three of my team members with me, and um, we were able to meet some kids that were wanting to take their archery to a collegiate level in the next year or two. There were several there that were just juniors. So that would be like fall of 25 recruiting, but there was also a few seniors there. Uh, one of those seniors is actually visiting our campus tomorrow. But, um, you know, we got to see some of them. There was three different segments set up for them to shoot in, and we could go up to the line while they were shooting and talk to them. Or, you know, and, and then they were able to walk around the tents and get information from us. And when we told a lot of these kids that they could come here and not only shoot, but be involved in a program that would have them in the outdoors and they would get to go on a every year or a fishing trip every year and things like that. The, the, the attention we got was just out of this world. I've gotten resumes, emails. It's just been crazy going through all that stuff. And, and, you know, we, obviously we want to find some talented shooters and, and I'm going to go to, you know, large tournaments to try to recruit some shooters for our program, but we also want good kids for our program. And that's something that we probably strive on more than anything. Um, you know, all of our kids in our program are, are great in the classroom too. And that comes first, first and foremost, um, our, our kids all make the grades. They all behave. Um, we don't have trouble out of our kids. Um, they, they do have a they they do have requirements to be in our program and and to just spell it out in plain English one of those requirements is behave and so we have that you know we have those rules in place William's done a great job with that um, as far as our fishing team our fishing team is I've, yeah. I've got I've gotten to meet most of them and and they are very professional at what they do and and our archery team and our shotgun team is too we we're a very professional group of kids but we we also excel in the classroom as well nice now does that with the recruiting but is it like football and all that basketball and all do they get a scholarship or is it more more or less like a club because i know we talked with uh oh i'm drawing a blank but with west virginia fishing team it's more of a club than a yeah, they they don't have anything really to do with the university. Like uh, West Virginia University doesn't uh, recognize it as a sports team, so they don't right, get yeah. any funding from the university. Is that something that you all deal with, or is is it a little different in the in D two? Yes, all my shooters are on scholarship. Awesome! awesome. Wow, that's great. Nice. Yes. So so uh, shoot, I still got four years eligibility left. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think we need a <laughs> Dan's going to school. Can we get can we get an application? Can we get an application? I, I can't promise y'all be like your other kids and do good in school though. <laughs> yeah. I just need to know need to know what your GPA is, your ACT score. <laughs> oh man. And can you, can you hit a target? And, and Dan, I, and Dan I can't said, give you the the first two, but the third one I can do. <laughs> and Dan said what's GPA? Mm. <laughs> he said, "Is that where I am in the world?" <laughs> yeah, is that, GPS is that like an IPA? <laughs> that, that, I, for a minute, I, for a minute, I'm wondering if Dan was wondering how to spell ACT. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah. "I can act on it." Yeah, he's like A Y S E E. Oh gosh, that's funny. So, so we were talking there before we got on. This uh, this scholars program is like, um, I mean, you all's main focus is to keep the heritage of hunting alive while these kids are in college, and and you know that's what you do. Like you just said, they get to go on a once in a lifetime hunt every student before they graduate. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, we also have the availability and opportunities. We also assist these students in getting jobs in the outdoor industry. So if if I have a student that's getting a marketing degree or a business degree, a lot of these students want to go on and work in the industry. We actually have kids in the industry right now that are previously have went through our program and gotten business degrees, marketing degrees. We have a young man that 
um, that received a marketing degree here. I'm not sure what year it was, but um, he works at Benelli now. And oh, nice. We have um, we actually have some stu- students that currently work at Pradco, which is here in Al- in, in Birmingham. And wow. Prad- Pradco is the company that has multi feeders, summit tree stands, um, the night and hail game calls, and they also have a fishing division. Like Pradco owns Yum Baits and some of these other companies, and we actually have students that work there, whether it's in customer service, marketing, or some type of other business role. So we do have, uh, they, they do have the opportunity. A lot of them want to move on and work in the outdoor industry. Maybe they want to get into some type of wildlife biology. Maybe they want to get into videography, and we have communications, videography uh, degrees, and things like that here. Uh, they might want to get into filming hunts. We have a couple boys that film hunts. So um, we have a lot of opportunity for some of these kids that want to move on and, and become uh, employees in the outdoor industry. And we also, um, with our fishing program, we also have some kids that you might see on TV in a couple of years fishing in the Bassmaster Classic Um we uh we are three time national champions, um, bass fishing and and bass pro shops, MLF school of the year, uh, bass master school of the year, national champions. We we won a lot of things in the fishing world too. So um Dang, that's crazy. Our our, our outdoor I, I didn't know anything like this existed. It's, uh, nothing like this existed when I come out of high school. I mean we <laughs> had there were only I think when I come out of high school, there was just a small handful of, of archery programs at a collegiate level. And the most you ever heard from was either Texas A&M or James Madison. They've been around for a long time with their archery programs. Um, but um, this this program is, is also designed for those kids. You know, a lot of kids go off to college and, and you know, life changes. You know, maybe they don't spend time in the outdoors anymore because they're in college. Maybe they don't. I mean, there's a lot of things when kids go off to college that they leave behind at home. And, and a lot of times they, for whatever reason, they get consumed in other stuff and and then they don't, you know, they don't stick with their roots. And this is an opportunity for them to come to school and be a part of a program and still be able to participate in the outdoors as a college student while they're away from home. Wow. Another, another very attractive thing for our students especially you know for recruitment for the teams and stuff you know with my archers um if if i recruit you to come here basically you you get uh, in-state tuition you don't have to pay out-state tuition if you're recruited for the outdoor scholar program Hmm. that's awesome that's that's almost that's almost like getting a check for about sixteen thousand dollars yeah that's what i was gonna say i mean that is a huge difference that's crazy it's more more than half more than half Wow, that's awesome. So, you know, we got a little quick break here. Why I can do this, you know, every every episode we like to do our salute to Valor. So tonight our salute to Valor is going to go out to Justin Allen Masters of Houston, Texas, where he served in the United States Marine Corps from 2004 to 2008 <clears throat> with the rank of an E4. He was stationed in Hawaii. I'm not I'm not even trying to say that. So I'll just go with Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh he was deployed to Afghanistan from 05 to 06 and Iraq from 06 to 07 where he was part of Operation Red Wing. He was awarded two Purple Hearts, uh two Combat Action Medals, an Iraqi Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Ribbon, sorry. Uh Joint Forces Medal, Good Conduct Medal, Navy Achievement Medal, a National Defense Medal, an American Campaign Medal and a Global War on Terrorism medal. So, uh, Justin, we'd, we'd really like to thank you for your service, bud. And obviously, you doing two tours, it's it's a lot. I know I know quite a bit about Operation Red Wings, so I know what you guys went through and everybody that was on that mission went through. So we appreciate your service and your time in country. Yep. Thank you for your service, Mr. Masterson. Yes. Thank you for your service, man. <clears throat> well, I wonder how saying that name in the military was for a drill sergeant. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> master, yeah, I, I, I'm, 
I'm sitting here wondering how good that sounded, Master Sergeant Masters. I know. Yeah, it, that's what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, um, shoot. It's like I was born to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of Full oh, Metal man. Jacket when I heard it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. If, if 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 you, there was two reasons, two reasons I, I have so much respect for, for military folks. I have some really good friends that's in the military, and, and my hat's off to them. I could never do that job, number one. The two biggest reasons I couldn't do that job is, number one, I watched Full Metal Jacket, and I'm not letting a guy talk to me like that. Number two, I'm too fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they can they can get that fat off of you. Let me tell you, <laughs> they'll run it out of. Yeah. Yeah, but they have to talk to you like that to get it off of you. I wouldn't go for that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's true. Yep. I would. Is... I would probably eat my jelly donut. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, like we said there in the beginning, you was uh, you coached before you know, for the high schools, um, how is it on this collegiate level in your opinion? Not even comparable. Um, uh, I, I, I had fun coaching. It was, it was fun at a high school level. I had a great time, had a great group of people, um, great parents, great, great athletic director to work for. I had, you know, I've, I've always, highly respected the school system that I come from. I didn't have any problems in school. Um, got along with everybody. I wasn't in trouble or anything. So, um, you know, when I got to go back there and coach, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And I met some great people, some that are, you know, more than best friends now. And, uh, but this, this journey here, it's just, it's the, the age group that I have and, and not having, you know, not having things hold me back when I want to to coach harder, or coach or you know do more more work for practice and things like that. You know, I've always said that. Um, I mean, I can say this; it doesn't bother me to say it. But you know, West Virginia they they have some lack in high school sports as far as sure. You know, they're regulated a lot, you know, for instance, how much they can practice, how much they can require for practices and, and all that. And, you know, I have that as a collegiate, level, but I don't take full advantage of that either though, because if you're doing it, if you're doing it right, you don't have to go super hard. Yeah. I have found that we have, we have figured out a practice schedule now that, that, it's not that grueling, but it maintains and still grows skill level. And I think that's that's important. The worst thing you want to do in any sport is burn out. And I really keep that in mind when I'm preparing these kids for competition or mm-hmm. or I'm with them trying to make them better is, is I want them to put in the time that it'll take to get better without burning them out. Not every kid is 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 folded to shoot 400 arrows a day, but if he shoots 50 great arrows a day, he's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Sure, and absolutely. So, so we've gotten to where you know we just maintain a steady practice schedule throughout the week and try not to wear people out. They have to have time in the classroom. Uh, and you know, they need to have time away from archery too. I, I stress to them all the time, you know, if, if things are going good, you're on your practice schedule, your scores are getting better. Everything's working out good. I tell you, there's no practice Thursday or Friday. Go do something that doesn't pertain to archery those two evenings. Go find something to do. I mm-hmm. mean, don't, you know, there's, and everybody needs to do that sometimes, um, this this winter, uh, we're going to go on a little vacation. And I can't tell you the last time Leah and I went somewhere and didn't take our bows with us. Well, I'm sure, like so, in a program like that, if you're uh, fishing in your own time, that could be extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> yeah, um, but Shoot, uh, we we have we've learned a lot about each other here um, as a team, as a group, and you know. I knew coming in that it probably wouldn't 
be for everybody. You always have you always have that in your mind that somebody's not going to like the new coach. Just like just like when a pastor leaves a church, how many people leave? There's always people leave. Yeah, never fail. Mm -hmm. When a pastor leaves the church, there's going to be fit. you got you got your people that follow the pastor. Yeah, and and so what happens? The guy preaches there for a month. And he's already got 50 new members in there because he's a new pastor. And so I was I was prepared that maybe some people wouldn't uh, want to be here for it. And and I was also prepared that, you know, it was going to be shocking to some of the ones that were already here when I got here. You know that, you know, this is different. This is different. That's not taking anything away from the last coach that was here, man, I wish he'd come back and teach me how to be an office man. I mean, he, that guy was so organized, man. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm horrible as an office person. I'm horrible. Um, I'm, I'm not good at it at all. And, and I'm not good at the whole business thing. And, and I told my kids that they better behave in the classroom because I don't want to, to meet with one of their teachers because number one, that's business. And number two, I gotta be <laughs> so, um, but, uh, it's going good. I can't, I can't imagine it going any better. The, I have a small group. I'm, my goal is to add 15 to 20 shooters in this, in this summer that is going to come here and start to shoot archery in the fall of 24. Yeah. Nice. And I have a couple that I'm talking to right now that are absolutely world ranked shooters. Wow. Uh, and then I have several I'm talking to that are great shooters, but one of the things I have to take in consideration for all of them is, are they good for our outdoor scholars program? Um, that, and, and are they good in the classroom, which most of them are. Um, so I have to kind of take that in consideration as well as their skill level behind the bow. And, You'll find that that a lot of these archers and a lot of these outdoors kids and stuff, that is a privilege for them. If it takes making the grades and behaving to remain in a program like we have, they're going to maintain grades and they're going to behave. It's just that's that's how it is. When when there's a consequence, you see a difference in a group versus a group that has no consequences. You know, you don't. (laughs) You don't remain in our program if you don't have the grades. You don't remain if you don't behave. And, sure. and so I think having those having those consequences uh, to remain in the program is is what helps the success of the program. I really do because um, even people here around campus noticed it. I was I'll tell you a quick story. There's a lot of different. It, it's a very vast. Um, culture of people here at the university um we have a great school full of great kids we really do we're lucky and i was in a local restaurant the other night and there was two young ladies there that were um you know i obviously i met them and i told them who i was and we talked for a couple minutes there while i was waiting on my food and 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 they knew i was you know when i told them that i was archery I was part of the outdoor scholars program and and you could tell these girls have probably never it's never crossed their mind to go deer hunting or fishing in their entire life and and the one she told me she said you know she said I'm familiar with what the outdoor scholars is and she said you would think that you know there's a lot of people on campus that that would think that oh that's just a bunch of rednecks that like to hunt and fish but she said you know, the outdoor scholar kids are so probably some of the coolest, nicest kids on campus. That's and awesome. That, that was an awesome compliment yes. coming from somebody that is that is in school for a totally different reason in totally different programs. Yeah. And 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 I told her, I said, Well, you know, our kids are, are home to be like that and, and they have a a code that they have to follow to be a part of that program. So um, just it just made me feel really good. It made me feel good about William. How he I've learned so much from William. Just you know how to I, I, I'll I'll never forget. You know I got to go I got to go to the team meeting. My team meeting was the first 
day back to school, first or second day back to school was my team meeting. And the fishing team meeting took place two hours before my meeting. So I went and sat in on the fishing team meeting. And just what I learned sitting in that meeting, just watching Coach Crawford conduct that meeting was just, it was, it was great. And, um, and I know I, I sat there and I, I just, I kind of told myself, I know now why I'm sitting in a room with the number one fishing team in the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it starts at the leadership and that's my goal is, is I want our archery team to be the best archery team in the country. And I want to have that leadership and know that those students trust me like the fishing guys trust coach Crawford and the shotgun kids trust coach Steve. I, 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 I feel like that, um, uh, they, they respond when they know they're here for a purpose and you, you, you know, you see how they behave and you notice how they behave and how they perform. And, you know, there's not evening goes by that. I don't tell my team I'm proud of. Mm-hmm. And I no. think, I think every coach should be like that. I, oh. if, if, if a coach isn't proud of his team, I mean, why is he there? If, he, if, if they're not growing and he's not proud of them, then I don't know why he's there. I mean, if you take, I mean, you take, you take Bill Belichick, you know, he's not winning as much as he used to, but I'll guarantee you Bill Belichick is still proud to be the coach of the New England Patriots. And he's proud of his players for the hard work they put in. And, and if they're having an off year, Bill Belichick's not going to give up on them. They're going to work harder. And I think that's where, um, I think that's what's helped me a lot. Uh, these, these shooters, when they realize how much, not just shooters, this is any sport. You're, you're going to get me preaching about, preaching about it here in a minute. But um, when, when athletes notice that you care that much about their success, the response will be way far beyond when they sense that you don't care about their success. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah. I have time slots every day to work with my shooters one-on-one so that they are all prepared to practice two evenings later as a team and compete together. And I'm not blowing my own horn. I'm not God's gift to archery coaches by far. I'm not the best shooter in the world by far, but, I will tell you this, and 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 you can take it to the bank. Every one of my kids get better every week. Every one of them. They are all better archers right now than when they step foot on campus second week of August. Every one of them are, whether they know it or not. I see their scores, and I watch them every day, and they're better. They're better than the day I met them all. And that's why I was brought here, and that's the job I'm going to do. Because you know, that's funny because it's it's kind of going around that you're going to be the the Nick Saban of the collegiate at- archery world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's Let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Oh. I don't want to be the Nick Saban of the college archery world. I want to be the Jeremy Jarrett of the college archery world. Oh, there you go. Uh, and, and carve and, your own path, make your own name. That's exactly right. Yeah. But but here's the thing. I want to do it. I'm committed to do it, but I want to do it right. And I and I am perfectly, perfectly at peace that when my team peaks and my coaching skills peak. That it's all God's timing, and 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 it's His time when He wants us all to peak. You know, I'm glad you brought him up because uh, you know <laughs> one one thing we like to do too, Jeremy, is um, we like to do a uh, um, a verse of the day for all of our podcasts. Mm-hmm. And so I've got the verse of the day uh, loaded up, and ready to go. If you guys are ready for it, ready, hit it, hit it, hit it. Uh, this is Romans chapter one, verse nineteen. And uh, it's also verse 20. I like verse 22. Uh, 20 also. Uh, it says, because that which may be known of God is... Ma- is this out of passion? 
It's not. Oh, yeah, it's got to be out of fashion. You know it's out of fashion. Do you want me to give it to you out of fashion? It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's this, Michael. Uh, okay, man. fine, fine. It's out of the passion then. I switched it. I was going to give you guys the King James because I just wasn't sure. No, you tonight. wasn't. Don't you lie I, to us. I had it up. I had it up, Dan. Mm-mm-mm. I can't lie about the word. My gosh. All just right, stra- fair enough. Just strap me down and... I don't know, beat me. Anyway, okay, in reality, the truth of God is known instinctively. For God has embedded this knowledge inside every human heart. And then verse 20 says, Because from the creation of the world, the invisible qualities of God's nature have been made visible. And then down here he says, He has made his wonderful attributes easily perceived. For seeing the visible makes us understand the invisible. Amen to that. Isn't that amazing? So, like, and, and the oh. reason the reason I brought this one up is because there is no way that you can look at creation and honestly say that it came from nothing. <laughs> that it's, I mean, it, it's it's a total impot. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard is for someone to tell me yeah. that everything we see and the human body, as complicated as it is, came from nothing, right? And and so. You know, whenever I go out in the woods or I'm fishing or whatever, man, it's like you and and it's not only that though. You know, I, I talk about that a lot because I really feel close to God when I'm in when I'm in His creation, mm-hmm. but I also feel close to God when I'm around His creation in my my family, my friends, my brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I don't say that as much as I you know we talk you know because we're we talk about outdoors a lot. Yeah, um, but. That's something else is the relationships that we have with one another and the love that we have for one another and the camaraderie we have, you you know, and, and like, like Dan, with you being in the military, you know, a level of camaraderie, like where you're going to lay your life down for that person beside you. That doesn't come from nothing. Yeah. That comes from a loving God who did it for us, laid his life down for us. Anyway, I, I don't know that kind of stuff, man. It you know, proves. something, something we're doing, um, something we're going to do that I've, that I'm doing this week. I'm actually doing Thursday. Um, I have a, a friend up North in Alabama and he is, um, he is coming down and bringing his 10 year old boy Thursday. I'm going to spend a couple hours with him. He's a, he's a big time wrestler and I'm really, with Coach and you're cutting out a little bit there, Jeremy. Sorry. Okay. Are you there now? Yep. We got yeah. you. Okay. So he's going to bring his little boy down Thursday and coach land and I, which he's the wrestling coach. We're just going to spend some time with the kid. The kid loves wrestling, going to college and wrestling is his dream. He's got a few years left of school, but, um, just bringing a young, a young kid down here like that and introducing him to the wrestling coach at this level and uh, let him share some of these videos with coach land and showing, you know, some of his success as a wrestler and getting advice from, from coach land on, you know, what can he do to get better and better every year? And, Mm -hmm. And coach lands a four time state champion. He won States all four years of high school. Oh, wrestled wow. at a cleat level and we're fortunate to have him here as a as one of the coaches of the wrestling team and and bringing a young kid in like that and just making his day um that's that's something that that is um you know he's that kid will never forget that he'll, he'll never forget that being able to come and hang out that's like me and you getting to go hunt with michael you know it's the same, it's the same um that's that's like some teenage girl getting to go backstage and hang out with Taylor Swift for an hour and a half. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah no, you're right. I, absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm serious. It is. Yeah, yeah. And um, that that goes. I mean, it, that kid will never forget that. And and we want to be able to to do. I, I love doing things like that for young people. And and um, my recruits that come and visit campus, every one of them is invited to bring their bows and after their college campus tour and after they meet me and meet with the outdoor scholars uh, and find out about the program and everything that evening, 
all the new recruits or the possible new recruits that visit campus, they get to come over to the range and practice with the college team. Do you know there is some when I offer those kids to bring their bows to campus and shoot with our college team after they're done with all their stuff for an hour or two? It's it's absolutely I have a girl coming Friday. When I told her that, she was just over the moon about it. It's like this girl cannot wait to not only see the college and hear about our program yeah. and see our facilities. This girl cannot wait to come on the range Friday and get to shoot targets with Grant Schnapp and Lexi Everett and Hunter Stevens and, you know, our our nice. team, our our core team. She's going to get to stand there and shoot with those kids. And, and that means the world that our kids want to be here on a day that they don't have practice and get to spend some time shooting with her. Yeah. And, and that's how I want recruits to come in here. I told my team when we have a visitor, this is this is how it's going to be. I want you to show them why they want to come to the University of Montevallo, why did, why they want to be a Falcon, and and my team is so on board with that. My team wants kids. They want to grow. They want more shooters. When I when I get back from talking to shooters or meeting new potential shooters for next fall and stuff, they they are all want to hear about it. Hey, did you meet anybody good? Did you find, is anybody wanting to come to college here? Yeah. We all as a team, not, it's not just coach and team. We are all a team and we all want our program to grow and we all have goals and we work towards them goals together as a team. And I mean, I'm just telling you, this program has a future like no other. We yeah. have we have a future right now, and here's the thing: we are dedicated to see our goals through for the future. We work hard towards them every day, and we don't we're not going to back down, and we're not going to give up. I have the best the best group of kids and the best team that a coach could ever ask. For. You could not handpick me another bunch of kids and bring them in here, and they're any better than my group I have right now. Nice. I, I just gotta say, we we could have used a better analogy when it come to uh, football coaches than Bill Belichick. <laughs> could we not have used? I don't want to say nothing, but like Mike, you know, Tomlin, Tomlin, Billy? Like. Mike Tomlin. You're gonna put Mike yeah, Tomlin Mike in the same Tomlin, conversation yes. as Bill Belichick? Never had a losing season. What? Hey. That's not true. That's true. It's never that, had a losing season. That, he's never had a losing season. So, 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 fifty-two percent winning is a winning season. <laughs> I'm just saying. Never like, had a losing season. Uh, okay, it's a fact. So, so here's here's the deal, though. If, if you, you gotta be careful that. saying that, though. You got some of our some of our pro staffers up from Maine and that area, Michael. They may take offense to that. Yeah, come on, man. Oh, uh, nah, Eric Gagnon, he don't like him either. He just <laughs> acts like he does. <laughs> so look, this, this is why I don't really have a favorite team because I like to watch games and I like to watch coaches and I like to watch how players react to coaching and I like to watch programs grow from new coaches or different styles or different players. Or I can whatever. understand that. I can understand and that. This is one reason that I'm on the Deion Sanders train. Oh, dude, I me think, too. Oh boy. I'm I, all in. I think <laughs> oh, when he said, when he said, I'm coming, that meant more to me than anything in the world. Because when I came here, I made a commitment to myself and to God and I'm going to make this archery program successful, and I'm going to do what it takes to do it. And if it means long hours, one-on-one -on -one instruction, bringing in other coaches to share ideas and do seminars, practice a little more, practice a little less, whatever it takes to watch my team grow and continue to get better, I'm going to do it. And, and I feel like Dion's going to do that. And I and, and well, he already has. I mean, you watch them, you watch them players rally. They they absolutely one hundred percent play for that man. Yeah, they do. They they're for sure. I mean, he's won more games his first season in Colorado. Won all last year. Mm -hmm. 
and we're two games into the season. Yeah, and and, and it's it's a commitment. It, it, it's it's a commitment. I have committed myself to not to not myself just be successful, but I want my kids to be successful. The first thing I want them to do is graduate and have a degree in their hand. That comes before archery. But but while they're here getting that degree in their hand, I want them to be the best they can be. And I'm here to, to give it everything I have to make them the best. And, and we've already set structure here that they have the opportunity to get better. It's up to them. We have, we have structured practices. We have mandatory practices. We have mandatory team meetings. If somebody's working on something and it's not working, we're going to switch gears. We're going to do something a little different. I have every one of my shooters analyze from the time they step to the stake till the time their arrow leaves the bow. And I know what they need to work on. I know what they don't need to work on because they, they've got it down. And I also know what they need to do just to get better mentally as a competitor. Yeah. And I've studied them, every one of them. And, and I'll be quite honest. I got my bow out the other day and shot. Hadn't shot an arrow since the ASA Classic. I never went that long in my life. That <laughs> oh, good arrow. Lord. What's wrong with you? Uh, brother, hey, I went four weeks and never fired an arrow. That's a sin. I, I mean, I've never, <laughs> yeah. I, I've never went four days without shooting an arrow, let alone four weeks. If you, and if you I got tell... my bow out. If you'd tell Troy Carpenter that, he'd have thought you'd switch, switched over to being a crossbow shooter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thought his wrist got a little limp. Well, that is a deep cut. Deep cut. Troy deep Car- cut, bud. His, <laughs> his wrist went limp on that one. Troy Carpenter's the one guy that knows better than that. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, knows. Man. he knows you, uh, that's for sure. He yeah. can't quite pull it back to his anchor point anymore. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting on Troy Carpenter to get disabled one day and have to use one. Oh, <laughs> oh man! You know, I, I I think we just started a brawl here. Oh gosh! <laughs> I tell you. Hey, let me tell you, let me tell you something. We we all, at some of us, you know, a lot of the professional archers, we 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 tease each other. I have mad respect. I'm, you know, I'm really good friends, and obviously, I shoot for Black Eagle Arrows, so. I'm really good friends with Jason Wilkins of Blacky Wears and and I mean if you want to talk crossbows he's a hall of famer. Oh. I practice I practice with him this summer. Let me tell you something. To watch somebody I don't care what kind of bow it is to watch somebody with that much talent. Yeah. Hit those 14 rings and unmarked yardage out to 50 yards. Number 1 Anybody that can stand on two feet and hold a crossbow as steady as Jason Wilkins, it's unreal. Nobody else really can. And number two, this guy judged yardage to the inch. I'm talking about the inch. Wow. If my rangefinder said 48.6, he'd say, I think it's more like 48.8. His <laughs> <laughs> skill level, if, if crossbow shooting in, in archery went away, and there were no more crossbows. If he's not the very first person you induct into a crossbow hall of fame, then then this world is corrupt, which part of it is. But <laughs> I mean, this guy has got I don't care if it's a crossbow or not, he's got mad, mad talent with a crossbow. Yeah. I've got I've got so much respect for somebody that can shoot anything like that. If it's a crossbow, a twenty two, a shotgun, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sure. That that comes down to hard work. That comes down to pure practice. You know, you knowing your equipment. Yeah. And it also comes down to you are so mentally tough just to be able to do that. Yeah, I agree. And so we 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 make the crossbow jokes because we're diehard compounders. But let me tell you something. Yeah. There's some guy out there with a crossbow right now that if you go buy a crossbow, you won't touch them. I don't care how good you think you are. <laughs> yeah. So but back to, back to the, the coaching thing though, this, this, this has been, it's been great. Um, I'm happy with, with how we're 
moving up. Um, we've got super good, super good athletes here. Um, I've got a young team. Uh, we've got, you know, we'll be bringing new shooters in for the next two years. And the shooters I have right now are still going to be here. Mm-hmm. So uh, not only are they leaders right now, they're going to be leaders then. I mean, I have, I have freshman leaders right now. I have sophomore leaders right now. I mean, I, we, we have, um, our team's young. When these new kids come in these next couple of years, I still have this group that I have right now. So, um, I'm, I'm excited for the future. I hope we're having a conversation, uh, on a podcast two years from now and, and we're celebrating something big, um, national because championship. I know, I know, I know, I know this program is capable. I know <clears throat> the development here is, is going to be capable of being at the top of the game. Oh, know, yeah. I, I told my shooters in a meeting one day, I said, everyone that's ever attempted anything in life was a beginner. Mm-hmm. At some point they were a beginner. And in, and in your case, at some point, everybody that shoots archery drew back their very first arrow and they were a beginner. Yep. Doesn't matter who it is. There was a time Levi Moore and her Dan McCarthy was a beginner. Uh, Brady Elton was a beginner. There was a time they were all beginners. And what you want to make of them. And, and I just, I just want to be a part of their journey and, and be able to help them wherever they need help. If they need, if they need help learning, learning anything, I don't care. I can't tutor them in college cause I'm not smart enough, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go find somebody can, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to, sub, I'll have to sub that out. Well, you know, college is smart. And if I looked that up, it's A C T. I'm on my way, boys. Here yeah. I come. There it is. There it is. Oh, and, 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 uh, and I don't nice. know. I don't know what it stands for, but it's real important that you have a good score on it if you want to get some money to come to college. <laughs> That's it. Right. That's it. Oh, and, you, know, you talked about my time coaching at the high school. Um, one of the things that, that helped me tremendously, you know, I, when I was at Braxton, uh, for those couple of years, I, I, I got to watch some really good coaches handle things and, and I never forgot it, you know, whether it was, you know, watching Josh Lunsford on a basketball floor, get out of the jam, watching him go to the state, state championships that year, uh, watching him go twice, um, you know, watching, watching, you know, the football coaches try and get the football players to understand what hard work was. And, you know, I got to spend a lot of time. We talked about Shane Oney on my last podcast. And I I told somebody the other day, I got to talking about Shane to him. And I said, you know, I learned the value of what hard work is. And I learned what you need to do to be at the top of your game mentally and, and practicing the game and, and honing your craft and everything. I learned a lot of that spending time around chain. And, you know, if I'm ever in a bind or if I ever just need somebody to talk to, even at the level I'm at now, I mean, I, I call Shane and, and, you know, it doesn't matter if you, if you need help, I've, I've learned to get it. If I need to call, somebody I shoot with or need to call one of the USA archery coaches or whatever, you know, I would rather admit I had to do that and get help than to be here doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't hurt to take advice from somebody that might been around a little bit longer than you. Oh yeah, definitely. It doesn't doesn't hurt at all. You know, pride, pride will kill you sometimes. And I try not to have pride. If I, if I'm in a bind, you know, sometimes old coach needs a good talking to as well. Yeah. You know? And I've learned that one thing I've I've had to learn is I've got a couple recurve archers on the team that shoots bare bow recurve. And you know, yeah. I could I could always you know, Troy Carpenter, I learned how to shoot I didn't learn how to shoot fingers. I learned shooting with Troy all those years how to properly set up a finger bow, execute a shot yep. with fingers, finger tabs, shoot a clicker, all that stuff yeah, I but, learned from Troy. Man, they made me but, shoot fingers first. I, I couldn't did, shoot anything else. But I, 
but I never learned a lot of what, how, how the bare bow technique is for aiming. And I got, I got a USA archery coach coming in August 30th, just to spend an eight hour day with my two recurve archers, because I know that to get them where they need to be, I'm going to need a little bit of help and for somebody to give me a little bit of pointers myself. And I would be handicapping those two if I what if I had too much pride to say this guy knows way more than I do. Let's bring him in to do a seminar. Yeah. And and it's it's gonna be I mean my two my two bare bow archers right now, they shot this entire three D course the other evening, okay? Both of them shot this entire three D course the other evening. You know how many targets they missed? They missed one target. That's it. Wow. wow, man, that's Shoot, crazy. <laughs> shooting bear boat curve out to 25 yards with no sights. They missed one target the entire evening yeah. practicing. And, and I, I mean, where could they be after I bring him in and work with them a little bit and, and show them stuff I can't show them? It's hard to tell where they'll be. Mm-hmm. But that that's what we're willing to do here to make our shooters better. If we need help, if we need to bring – as a guest speaker in for something, if we need to bring an instructor in for a seminar, if we need to do whatever we need to do, we're going to do it. And we want to make our shooters better. Yep. We want them to come the classroom. We also want them to hit 12 rings. Yep. So we're going to do what it need, what we need to do to do that. And, um, and it's, it's a great, it's a great career. It's rewarding. It's, it's a blessing. And, um, you know, as of right now, everybody's like, "Are you are you ready? Are you missing archery yet? Are you getting back to shooting?" Let me tell you something, man. I don't miss nothing about competing right now because I love coaching. I, I hear you, it. brother. Well, we appreciate you for your time this evening, Jeremy. It was awesome talking to you. Love that you're in this new career and this new setting there, and I think you're going to do a great job. You definitely have the talent. And uh, you'll make some great shooters there. Let's see a national championship come here next couple of years, hopefully. Woo, yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's that's our that's our plan. And if anybody's listening right now, um, especially any any high school seniors, juniors, whatever, if you want to go on our our website and and it's montevallo.edu, outdoorscholars.montevallo.edu, you can check out our program. You can see what we do. But let me tell you something. If you love the outdoors and you, you love to hunt, you love to fish, you love to trap, you love to do anything in the outdoors, let me tell you something. I promise you, you need to be at the University of Mono Valley. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, brother. Well, man, we sure appreciate you this evening. Okay, guys. It was great. I enjoyed it as always. Yep. And if you need anything, you reach out to me. Y'all are doing a great thing there. Keep up, keep up the work and everything. And... Um, man we'll we'll get together again soon yes sir like i said yep, it was a pleasure speaking with you this evening and uh keep up the good work there at the program and we'll talk soon all right i appreciate you guys if you need anything you know how to get older I mean, all righty great I- thank you sir all right guys you heard him if you are an outdoorsman and you want to continue that hunting heritage while you're in college just go to the outdoor scholars dot com or the outdoor scholars montevello.edu and you check them out there so everybody thanks for listening this evening thanks for watching us on our facebook live be sure to check us out on apple Podcasts, amazon music google podcast and all the other networks about 18 other ones we appreciate you all listening have a good evening This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Outdoor Pro Shop, LLC. Outdoor Pro Shop is a family-owned and operated firearms dealer and sporting goods retailer. They have pay-over-time options, a rewards program, and customer service satisfaction that is unmatched. They might not be the biggest, but they strive to be the best. Contact them today at 240-360-1298 or visit them on the web at www.outdoor-pro-shop.com. That's Outdoor Pro Shop, 240-360-1298.